Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video I'll be showing how to return data from one activity back to the previous launching activity. So this builds on the uh, multiple activity project that was created in the previous demo. Uh, see the comments below for a link to that demo. The quick review of what's going on in that is I've got a first activity, uh, the main activity, which has a button. When you click the button, it builds an intent to launch the second activity, and then it calls start activity on that intent. The one interesting thing that I'm doing for building this intent is I'm actually not doing it here, I'm actually passing it into the second activity. So I want to launch the second activity, and so I ask the second activity to build me an intent through this custom function here called make intent. Let's have a look at that. And that is simply going to create the intent for me to launch this second activity class. So let's just see what's going on with this to start with. So I'm going to launch the, act the program. Here it is. I click on launch second. And now I get to the second activity. This is a slightly different layout than uh, was previously used, uh, but we'll use it in this activity or this demo to uh, to get some data. So I'll type in some data here, like "Hello World." Oops. Let's do this. Uh, you know, "Hello" or something like that, and then uh, we'll put in the. Uh, we'll say eventually return data from activity. We will want that data to come back here. We'll do something with it, but we don't have it yet. So let's walk through how we're going to how we're going to do that. The first thing that happens is we need to uh, set up the main activity, the launching activity, to not only start an activity, but start an activity with the intention of getting result back. And so instead of calling start activity, I'm going to call here start activity for result. And I can either pass in uh, this extra result code in addition to what intent I want to launch, or I can pass in a bundle. I'm just going to do this one here. So I need to pass in the intent I wish to launch, and then I have to pass it in the request code. And this is just a number. Um, so I'll just type in any number I like, and that's fine. This, of course, has no meaning. It's currently a magic number, and so I'm going to extract that. So I'm going to do refactor, extract as I go, and I'm going to click on extract. Uh, as a constant. I'm going to give it a name. Let's call this one uh, request code for uh, get get message, because that's what we're doing. So here's the request code that I've got. Now we'll see where that gets used in just a moment. So let's we'll come back to that in a second. So we're going to pass or er, start this second activity coming into here. The activity runs as before. The one thing that I want to do differently is when I'm done, I want to not I want to extract the message from this text edit here. I'll zoom in a little. So I want to extract the message from this text edit, and then um, uh, let's put here content description is better. And then once I am done, oh I want that on the hint rather. And once I have uh, once I have the data that the user has entered from here, I want to pass it back. So inside of my on click listener for the button that finishes my activity, I'm going to start by extract uh, data from the UI, and then I'm going to pass data back. So to extract the data here, I can quickly go through it. I want to get the edit text. I'm going to call it edit. Uh, need to do a find view by ID, and this is going to be r.id. And this happens to be called message. You can see here it's called message. So now I've got the edit text. I can say string message equals edit dot uh, get text dot to string. This will hand me back the string I want to work with. So this is whatever the user typed in. Now I have to pass it back. And so to do that, I need to build myself an intent. Intent, intent equals new intent. And much like passing data from one activity into another, I need to use an extra in order to pass data back as sort of a result. So I'm going to into this intent, I can say intent dot put uh, extra, and I need to pass it in a key. And so the key I'm just going to put in here, like something like uh, the message, and then I need to pass it in whatever the message is, which is message here. 
So this is this string here is just a arbitrary string that I want to make it the key for extracting the data. Um, and I can put anything I like here. I can you know any numbers at the end, whatever. It just it needs to be an uh, unique. One way to do that is to encode it and prefix it with your package and your activity uh, name, your class name. But this will do for the moment. We'll come back and clean this up in just a second. So now I'm passing that in here. The last thing I need to do is I need to set the result. So I'm going to set result. And there's two different versions I can do here. I can pass in a result code, which is going to be the activity activity dot result. And I can say result OK or result cancel. Or I could define my own, which is based on that uh, first user. I'm going to say OK. And I need to pass in an intent if I want to actually hand data back. So now I'm going to hand the that back. Now the last thing I need to do is actually handle this coming back into my main act my activity here. I can't simply like re get a return value here because this is done asynchronously. When I start activity for result, this function actually continues execution and finishes whatever it was doing. So I'm no longer sitting in this piece of code. I need to set up a callback listener. So this is the uh, listener for what has happened when I get a result back, and so that's going to be the onActivityResult method. I could go ahead and type it all out. Instead, I'm just going to use uh, Android Studio's uh, code generation. So I'm going to say here, I want to, I did Alt Insert, and then I'm going to override a method. So Control O would have done it for me. These are all the ones that the activity base class and all the other base classes I have support. I'm just going to start typing on activity, and here it is, on activity result. I'll double click that, and now we've got it. Turns out I don't need the uh, initial implementation. So I've got three things coming back to me. I've got the request code, which is what I passed in here. The result code, which is that uh, result OK. And then the intent is what I handed the function. So I can say here something like switch request code on, and I'm going to say case. I've already got this constant named here, uh, request code get message. And then I need to check to make sure that it was OK. So if uh, result code is activity dot activity dot result OK then I know it worked. So let's go ahead and get the message and do something with it. So first getting the message, string message equals, I've got the uh, intent, so I can say name data, I'm going to call it get a string extra. And now here, I need to pass in what key I want to use to pull data out of this intent. As you might have seen from the uh, demo of passing data into a, an activity, I can make up these strings any way I like. So I need to come in here, and for the moment I need to copy this string. We'll find a better way in just a moment. So I say I want to extract the value from that string. Oh, and then I need to say, no, well, that should do it. Uh, string. There you go. Now I'll do something with it. So let's just put a log message out. Log.i and my app, something like uh, result message is, you can imagine in your application you put this on the screen, you put in a database, you do something interesting with it. it. Maybe it's the name of the user that you wish to log in as or something. So I'll just put out a log message. And I'm going to put it down here else. If it wasn't a success, log i my app uh, activity cancelled. It is possible for the user to cancel the activity even though I don't have any buttons here on my UI to do so. I've only got this one kind of OK button, but the user can always click the back button and that will give you a cancel. So let's see when that happens. So the quick recap of what I've got, when I launch the activity, I call start activity for result and I pass it in the request code, which is just some arbitrary number I defined. And when I get the call back from the function, I'm going to come into this on activity result. 
I'm going to check the request code. I check the result code, which is did it succeed or fail, and then I pull data from this intent here. So that's the one activity. Second activity is going to basically be in charge of populating that intent. So the only additional tech or code I have is I find out kind of whatever data I wish to put into the intent. Here I'm only putting in one value. I could also put another one. So intent dot put extra and something like the height and some number. If I wanted to, I could put in more data here, but not necessarily now. So I put the data in, and then I call set result in order to say yes, I have succeeded in what I wanted to do. And here is the data that you can pull from. And finish will then pop this activity off the call stack. So let's come back here. I'm going to run my application. It refreshes it. I'll launch the second one. We can type in our message. Hello world. I'm going to return from the activity. And, well, let's just see what happened. Here we go. Inside of log cat, I got that message. Let me just show you that again to kind of ensure we're not pulling it all over anyone's eyes. So here we'll say something like, uh, this is the new message. Click return from activity. And here it comes back into my first activity with that. The only other piece of code we wrote was handling this case of what if the user cancelled. So I go into here. I could type anything I like in here. When I click the cancel button, it goes back and just says, okay, it cancelled. Um, if you wanted to pass back more complex information, um, you could, you know, as I mentioned just a moment ago, encode more primitives there. Um, but you can't actually pass back an object unless you encode its state one by one into uh, the extra, or you make it parcelable or serializable. So the one last thing I want to show here is, let's get rid of this the message 9999, or whatever string I happen to have. Sure, I could make this a named constant, but I'm still exposing the, sort of the content of this, uh, of what this second activity is doing. So what I'm going to do is, much like we had here a make intent, I'm going to make a public static string and get result uh, message. Pass it in an intent. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to copy this code. Return intent dot get the extra. So I'm going to encapsulate into my second activity the ability to process this intent. Because I built it in my second activity, I'm therefore going to extract it in my second activity. And all my main needs to know here is I can say second activity dot get result from message, pass it in the intent. So that will do my encapsulation for me. And of course, the one last thing I want to do is let's make this a named constant. So I'm going to go right click, refactor, extract, and I'm going to say constant. And here I can give it a name, something like result uh, key for a message. And I'm also going to change that down here into two places. Up here it should be public static final. Fantastic. And let's give it something more meaningful. Something like, well, the good way to do this is based on my package name. Dot my activity. And then I'm going to put something like uh, return message. So this should be unique anywhere. And just to prove it's still working, run my activity. I'll launch log cat. And uh, now encapsulating. And it still works as fine. Okay, thank you very much for watching.